there was a young man, Thomas Young, right. watching that. He was an Iraq War veteran. He right. signed up for the military right after right. Uh, the 9-11 attacks, as many Americans did in good faith. Uh, just a, f a few days later, uh, he's, at, he's, he's at war. And before we know it, he's attacked, he's shot. Uh, his whole troop is, is, is attacked, and he's suddenly paralyzed. He's a T4, the, the section of the spine that's between the shoulder blades. Yeah. So Thomas was paralyzed from the nipples down. Uh, Thomas can't cough. Thomas can't, of course, can't walk. Uh, Thomas is impotent. 20-something prime life male left his sex life on the Main Street, Sodder City. And, uh, you know, he, uh, I made sure we got this scene in the film. And he's there watching. This man who went to serve his country right. on the premise of good faith right. then ends up in perhaps one of the most awful tragedies that, that, we've, that we can remember. I want to show people a clip just so you can fully appreciate who Thomas is and where he was. The first clip is short, and I want people to see him when he was still healthy and able to sort of articulate much more clearly. Hey, wow. Here it is. That is massive. When I made the phone call on September 13th, it was because I saw the pictures of him standing on top of the pile saying that we were going to smoke the evildoers out that did this to us and we were going to find them in their caves. Now this is another clip coming up. This is Thomas in February of this year at the screening of Body of War. You were interviewing him via webcam and he's joined by his partner Claudia who's also an Iraq War veteran. Let's take a look at him now. In July of last year, I began to experience sharp pains in my abdomen. And I went to the VA and they treated me like I was the second class citizen. It's a junkie looking for pain medicine just to get high. You know, I was genuinely in pain. I went to a private hospital. Treated much better. They suggested a colostomy to remove my colon. I thought that would reduce the pain. It did for a few days, but the pain came rocketing back. And I decided to uh, go on hospital kick when I have a pump. They provide the same IV medication as the hospital provided. And after my one year anniversary with my wife, I will begin to wean myself off of food and one day go away. Now, when, do you, when will you begin this? Uh... When will you get off your meds and refuse to take the uh, nourishment? Uh, um, we're shooting for after Claudia and mine first anniversary. Which is when? April 20th. To Thomas, Thomas, to people who would plead with you not to do this, you would say what? I would say that this latest round of governing pain is just the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. I've been doing this for nine years. The last four of those have been post pulmonary embolism slash an oxic brain injury. Well, it's a lot of dexterity and upper body power. And so I can do things that I used to do even when I was sort of paralyzed. I I am so limited in the things I can do on a daily, daily basis that I feel I'm just totally helpless. And I'm just tired of doing that every day. Wow. Thomas I should was, explain, Mark. Yeah. Okay. Thomas had a pulmonary embolism after we finished the film. And that explains his speech. 
He also can't hold silverware. Yeah. So he has to be fed. So he and Claudia, you know, when they were able to go outside, would go to a restaurant and she would look for a corner where she could feed him without being stared at. Wow. Just another, you know, people don't see this. This was the most sanitized war of my lifetime. The president said, you can't take pictures of the coffins, and the whole press corps said, okay. Uh, there were, people did not see the pain, and that's why it's going to be easy to go to another war. Right, because people don't see the pain. Thomas, despite the fact that he's making a decision to end his life, is still attempting to put a spotlight on that pain. Uh, he wrote in a letter this week that went viral. The letter was uh, titled, uh, Last Letter, a Message to George W. Bush and Dick Cheney from a Dying Veteran. He says, I write this letter, my last letter to you, Mr. Bush and Mr. Cheney. I write not because I think you grasp the terrible human and moral consequences of your lies, manipulation, and thirst for wealth and power. I write this letter because before my own death, I want to make it clear that I and hundreds of thousands of my fellow veterans, along with millions of my fellow citizens, along with hundreds of millions more in Iraq and the Middle East, know fully who you are and what you have done. You may evade justice, but in our eyes, you are each guilty of egregious war crimes, of plunder, and finally of murder including the murder of thousands of young Americans, my fellow veterans, whose future you stole. Now, Thomas actually was supposed to be here today uh, to speak with us via webcam. Unfortunately, we got a phone call about a half hour before we came on air saying that he was feeling very ill. He needed to be rushed to the hospital. I heard his voice. He sounded very faint. He was very disappointed that he couldn't be here to speak to you, but also to address this issue even to his dying day. He's committed to putting a spotlight on this un just war.